you haven't done so already, get those nasty blades sharpened on your lawnmower. You're out there beating your grass to death. Give it a nice shave instead. Get those blades taken care of. That's what we're here doing today. Getting the nasty blades taken care of on this lawnmower. its size. Okay, it's time to work on the, uh, gotta get the undercarriage, take the blades off, get them sharpened, clean the underside. So anyway, this works out pretty well, usually. I never had a problem. These blades are going to take a bunch of grinding. <laughs> Look at that. Well, you know, this isn't just on the grass. This, I've been having to go over rough terrain with it. I'm going to have to be taking a lot of material off of that. But hopefully I'm finished with doing the outdoor uh, areas, so I'll clean this up for when I place it on there. And uh, Here's some blades I've got for the lawn, so they're in a little better shape. Still pretty bad. I mean, look at that whack down there. Whew. But uh, I'll get all these dressed up, get the better set back on, save these for outdoors. I get my hood on and some gloves. Got whacked a little bit. Anyway, I get these things ground and back on there. I just use a real simple clamping situation for this with the angle grinder. Now, I've used it on my bench grinder. It's a little tough getting in there. I got a lot of grinding to do. This isn't just a touch-up job, so uh, it's going to be much better to do with the angle grinder and get the right angles the whole way. Just be quicker. Be sure you got your face shield and gloves. A couple of quick tips while you're doing this. Oh, let me get my hood off all the way. Probably hear me better. Um, when you're grinding it and you get down to uh, you know where you're finished grinding it, uh, be sure you always have some water on hand. I mean, get the water before you start grinding, but yeah, <laughs> nice cold water. You can even do a uh, a mix. Well, I won't get into that. Some uh, better quench mix cools it faster. But anyway, so then you just like quench this. I already just quenched it earlier, so it was still wet. But anyway, when you get that grinding done, because you don't want it to cool off slowly, you want it you want to quench it hard so it stays, you know, some kind of hardness level on the front. Uh, it isn't really, I mean, it's not like tool steel or anything, but, uh, you know, I would, I would imagine it's like medium grade steel at least. So you should be able to get some hardening with a little bit of quenching. And the, uh, the other thing is, be sure when you're grinding, you want to take off about the same amount you did. If you ground a long time on the other one, then, you know, grind a while on this, because you're going to have to balance them. Anyway, once you get done with the grinding, then you're going to go to balance them. So, uh, you know, you'd be taking it off one way or the other kind of deciding whether I'm even going to grind these other blades or whether I'll just buy new ones. The other ones are so beat up, uh, may just not be worth the time. So I may start on one and then just, yeah. <laughs> I need like 30 bucks for a set, so may I just use this steel for something else on the others. But uh, these aren't bad. They're coming in, but it's, you know, taking me a little longer than I'd hoped. Another point, when you grind the backside, remember the backside of these is flat, you know, typically. You don't want to cut it into a knife edge kind of deal because uh, then the grass isn't going to be well I'd say it's not going to be ejecting properly you know <laughs> if you cut it half and half then you know grass could just as well go down as it could uh, go up and out the hopper 
So that's just a little tip on that. It's kind of okay if this thing kind of rounds a little bit like scimitar-ish. Well, I was pretty lucky on grinding this one. Uh, yeah, I was able to keep it uh, stayed totally balanced. Yeah, I know this isn't a perfect balancer. Yeah, I used to have a ball bearing type thing. I used to fly model airplanes and use a ball bearing. We had a very small uh, wire, very high tensile strength wire going between a couple of ball bearings. And uh, But the fact that it's swinging back and forth and it's wanting to level out, that kind of shows you it's, if it was heavier on one side. Well, let's demonstrate. I mean, you can see the difference. I just hung this little sharpie on there, and you can see, you know, how much it's hanging down. So, anyhow, that's uh, that's pretty good for balance. As good as it gets. Didn't have to finagle with it. Yeah, I'm not real uh, real plus with the edges. Nah, that one's not bad. This one, there's still a pretty good ding there in the end. But I know the other side, when it whacks the same spot, we'll take it off because it's a little cleaner there. And uh, you just can't grind off another eighth of an inch of the blade. You know, this is out in the country. In the city, well, <laughs> I used to hone these things down just like a, a knife blade. Yeah, another little tip, when you're doing this, always grind the worst side of the blade first. So, you know, and then you'll know how deep you want to go in it, and then you also will know when you go to grind the other side, you're going to grind, you know, about the same amount of material off to try to keep it balanced. If you, if you do the easy side first, well, you might have to come back to the easy side to, uh, you know, balance it out with how much you take off the bad side. But, you know, this is just a mower blade. <laughs> Frankly, Scarlet, I don't give a damn. And anything that might... Uh, like fall off on your foot or come loose and and snag you somehow. Uh, best to use two clamps. Uh, here I got two Jorgensen clamps. Yeah, if you haven't used Jorgensen clamps before, you kind of want to keep the uh, sides of the clamp parallel. You get the best clamping force. And typically, what you want is you first tighten up with the the inside the clamp that's closest to the jaws. You're going to tighten that one up first, and then for your real tightening here, you get more leverage from this side. So. Tighten that up and then crank down on that. So I try to keep these, uh, you know, the most accessible. With two clamps, this thing, uh, if a clamp vibrates a little bit, it's not going to fall off on your foot and cut into you. Uh, that's not a lot of fun. Uh, and also, on other types of parts, you want things flying around. So, yeah, I really suggest doubling up on clamps on anything that might be problematic. These uh, really beat up blades for the lawnmower. So I ended up taking kind of an intermediary course, trying to get them ground down all the way to where they're really nice, just taking way too long. So but I didn't want to throw them out because they could be used with backup blades. So I just ground them down, see how scuzzy that is, edge is. But I have to keep in mind that I was using these even the week before I took them off, and I was mowing the lawn, and I was doing things effectively. Uh, beating the grass to death, but uh, anyhow. So that would be workable. So I did that. You know, one of the things to keep in mind on projects, you know, I learned this a while ago. I would get upset with a part or a part would break and I'd just toss it out. Then later on down the road I'd think, you know, if I just had that part I could uh, do this or I could, uh, you know, I could have used it. I just, you know, you know, for example, uh, if one of the blades breaks on my lawnmower and I need to mow the lawn, you know, here I've got backup blades. They aren't great, but hey, they'll work. So, just did a little grinding on them. And I will uh, put some oil on them, wrap them up a little bit and hang them up in case I need them. One of these full face shields. Well, I lived in California. It was in an area that was very dry and uh, goggles were fine, but up here they just fog up and it's a real problem. So. Uh, this full face shield works pretty good. The only thing I, I don't like about this one is it's a little hard for it to flip up and lock. I'd like if it was a little easier. That's, I guess it just maybe needs to be worked a little bit. Yeah, it's going. But uh, yeah, this is much handier. It doesn't interfere with my glasses. You know, the times I end up taking goggles off, 
because they fog up. Then I'm left with just my glasses, and that's a little dangerous. Stuff can shoot in and around your glasses. So, yeah, don't take the chance. Get one of these dudes. Get a decent one. I wouldn't suggest, uh, well, Harbor Freight ones. <laughs> I have had ones of those that you couldn't see through very well. But, hey, hey, some of those might work fine. So, just a tip on that. And for gloves, uh, I wouldn't suggest the cloth gloves. Let me show you. Leather gloves. You're going to be far superior to using a cloth type glove. Uh, especially if you get in and you're using... Well, I've got some discs that are for taking paint off, and they have a super rough surface on them. Um, the other day, I just grabbed a pair of gloves like this, and I was grinding, not grinding, but I was taking the surface off of some metal with one of those... Uh, I was taking the surface off of something, cleaning up some steel with a polycarbide abrasive wheel. And, and these things have a very rough surface on them. Well, in the process of doing it, the thing kind of slipped over to my glove tan. And I just barely touched it. And I had on a glove like this and just ripped right through the material almost just instantly. Boom! It was just right down to my skin. The uh, leather abra braids. Uh, it won't just tear off like uh, like a fabric. So if you're gonna wear you're gonna wear gloves, which I'd suggest on something like this, uh, get some good leather gloves. Before you put your uh, mower blades back on, I highly suggest some anti-seize compound. Not only protects it, keeps it from getting stuck in there, but uh, the other thing it allows you to cinch it down a little better because you don't get that uh, static friction. You know, you get more of the uh, friction when it's moving so you really can get the thing seated down better uh, just all around a, a good compound to use so anyway suggest that and I'm gonna go ahead and put the blades back on here and get this back on the ground I uh, went ahead and uh, lubed things all the zerk fittings and uh, oiled some other spots yeah while you're under the hood if you got a mower with two blades be sure they aren't gonna smack into each other and you want to normally set them at 90 degrees opposed, approximately. Time to put her back down, test it out. Alright, cleaned everything I am going to clean off on the deck. Washed it off good. Obviously set it down to its lowest setting so you can reach in there and uh, don't forget to pull it up ahead of time. Uh, this mower has really served me well. This is a Husqvarna. Uh, it's got the 20 horse. You know, you read a lot of bad things about all of these mowers these days. I've heard them like cracking in half and all kinds of things like that. Uh, once I got the chains on the back of this, it's really served me well. Uh, before that, I, I couldn't even mow the lawn sometimes it would slip. Uh, I always carry a a long board with me to use like an oar when I get stuck so I could push off. Um, now the only thing I'm using that for is uh, if I run across a running mole or something and I can whack them like a polo player. But uh, yeah, I've gotten a few of them. But uh, yeah, I use it actually for lifting this thing up. There's a couple of places I have to get that a little out of the way. Uh, I think served me well. Uh, the other day I was going down through some uh, rough areas of our property where we had some Scotch broom that was six to eight feet tall and some of it was an over an inch in diameter, probably an inch and a quarter and uh, I was just driving over it and uh, grinding it up. I'm not sure why the blade got pretty chopped up uh, and, and, I, and there was of course some rocks here and there. This did the worst damage of course. 
But uh, yeah, it was, it was doing well. I was able to go up the hill, some very steep hills, and um, you know, mow some very deep, uh, deep grass. So anyway, I think it served real well. I made a tactical mistake when I bought it that I didn't get the larger one because I have uh, concrete concrete retainer walls around my grass and they drop off like eight feet on the outside. Well, this thing I have to run my wheels right up against the concrete. I mean over the concrete to where, you know, if I make a mistake I'm going over the edge. So, yeah, it would have been nice to have as you can see on this side. So in terms of the cutting, it really doesn't extend out much. Another couple inches would have been a real blessing on that. So not something I thought about when I bought the mower. It's been a great mower, and I better get on the mowing. RH here, signing off. <laughs> happy grass, happy mowing. RH. Relentless Homesteading, signing off. Please subscribe. Whoa.